Sometimes I get a little scared when I have to speak. And uh, Sandy, Sandy Driscoll said, uh, don't, don't you get anxious? And you, you don't get anxious. And I said, oh, yeah. And uh, so I have to have my blankie with me. <laughs> well, really, we're, uh, we're going to talk about comfort. And uh, do you know what an old word for this kind of blanket is? Comforter. Comforter. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. So I thought I really ought to dress for the day. Stand with me, if you will, once again. And uh, as Pastor says, meet me at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. We're going to look into the Word today. Paul, wow, one of his most personal and intimate letters I mean, he just kind of spills his guts. He tells us about it, how life really is. Well, we know how life really is, don't we? But he's going to tell us from his perspective. And here he goes, verse 1, chapter 1, 2 Corinthians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints who are throughout Achaia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the suffering of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. But if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Or if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in the patient enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer. And our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that you are sharers of our, afflict our sufferings, so that you are sharers also of our comfort. Let's pray a word together. Lord Jesus, we need you today. We need your comfort. We need all your comfort, and we're so glad that you're the God of all comfort. And so, Lord, we, we rest in you. We bask in your presence. We sit, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to teach us from your word. And we pray, Lord, that our hearts would be open, that you would speak the truth into our hearts so that we may act on your divine compulsion. We pray this in the name of the God to whom we pray. Join me, will you? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Now that's out of the New International Version. 
whatever version you're looking at today, I don't need to tell you that we live in a society concentrated on comfort. And I guess I'll admit, in my elevated age, I am now called to comfort. I like it. We all want a comfortable life. Good health, comfort from aches and pains, comfortable lifestyle based on money and housing, cars, entertainment, ease of operation. Well, sometimes that's a little questionable, isn't it? Um, thanks to Fred yesterday, he helped me with technology at uh, the Grief Share event, surviving the holidays. But we got these new phones. And so, you know, it's, it's not always comfortable just because you get a new phone. You gotta learn some new stuff. You gotta figure out where the buttons are, where the apps are. But anyway, I do like my comfort. I like my comfortable bed, I like my comfortable pillow, I like my comfortable recliner. This word comfort that Paul talks about here it comes from the same word that Jesus used when he called the Holy Spirit the paraclete. He said the comforter would come, the helper, the advocate who would come alongside us to assist us, to teach us what Jesus taught us. And that's what he does. In Exodus 3, God told Moses his name was Yahweh. I am. I am. The one who is for us exactly what we need at that very moment. And Jesus' name is Yahweh is salvation. More than just forgiveness of sins, more than even heaven. Not just for the mansion just over the hilltop or the sweet by and by. It's for now. It's for real life and real living. In a little while, we're going to celebrate Christmas. I know, I don't want to spoil it for you. As if you hadn't seen some evidence that Christmas is coming. My favorite name for Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And he really is. He really is. Uh, this letter from Paul, so personal, so transparent. Uh, it tells us about him. Reuben Welch said this letter from Paul is his most personal, most transparent insight into the man. More of the real human Paul is revealed in 2 Corinthians than in any of his other epistles. His pain, his hurt, his disappointments, but also his courage and his hope. Paul, you see, was hurting from the attacks that he endured from the Jews, from the enemies outside the church, as well as those inside the church. His integrity and authority as apostle, they were questioned. Corinth, you see, was sin city. The church reflected some of that environment. He loved his church. He was concerned for his church, his concern for the believers, his brothers and sisters in Christ. But he was concerned that those false teachers who were trying to undermine Paul so they could spew out their twisted teachings and get his believers, his friends, his sheep and his flock off track. When Paul wrote of tribulation, distress, affliction, and trouble, he knew what he was talking about. Listen to Paul a little bit later here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, when he says, But in everything commending ourselves as servants of God, in much endurance, in afflictions, in hardships, in difficulties, in beatings, in imprisonments, in mob attacks, in labors, in sleeplessness, in hunger, in purity, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in genuine love, in the word of truth, and in the power of God, by the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and the left, by glory and dishonor, by evil report and good report, regarded as deceivers yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and yet behold we are alive, as punished and yet not put to death, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. 
It doesn't mean Paul was at ease when he talks about comfort. But rather, to encourage, to come alongside, Paul uses it to describe the character of God and the work God undertakes on behalf of his own folks, his children, you and me. Paul goes on to explain who this God of comfort is. He's the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, this relationship is only possible through the Trinity. God only, as a, as a person of the Trinity, can be both God and Father of the Son. John Stott, we studied last summer, last spring, knowing God. Well, pretty important to know who it is who is making the promise. Can he keep it? Is he able to do what he promised? Well, I can tell you today, yes, he can. And Bill, thank you. In class today, you said God has a perfect track record of keeping his promise. I loved it. So Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, begins his letter, as he often includes, with praise to God. He knew God is a comforting God. Oh, yeah, it's up on the screen. Okay. Um, he's a comforting God. Charles Spurgeon, I know that's a new name for you, but um, he said, here was a man who never knew but what he might be dead the next day. For his enemies were many and cruel and mighty. And yet, he spent a great part of his time in praising and blessing God. Wow. What about us? Have we found that God is a comforting God, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. You see, it's not a fake comfort. It's not a flimsy comfort. This is pretty hefty. I'm getting a little bit warmed up, in fact, by it. Going down to university, I saw this big sign, big, huge sign, big garage sale. You know those garage sales. Somebody is trying to sell you what they don't want. And you go to look at it and buy what you don't need. And I was thinking about our day, our culture, our society. A lot of people are trying to sell you garage sale fake comfort. In a bottle, in a pill, on TV, in bed, or the mirror, and there's only one real source of comfort, and that's God himself. Because this God of comfort is also the God of all grace. And we're saved by grace, not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, God's gift, all his gift. And uh, this epistle, is so real, true, it's not fake. It deals with authentic Christian living. The gospel in real life context, day to day, moment by moment. And this book of the Bible and this text is relevant because it points out to real needs for pastors, for teachers, for deacons, for all of us, all believers. Paul knew that the Holy Spirit and the comfort of the living God were his. Again and again, God had come to comfort him. He knew the scriptures. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear because... His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Oh, my. And then the psalmist, he says, Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our form, our frame. He's mindful that we are nothing but dust. No wonder we see some dirty, rotten critters. We're just dust. 
As for man, his days are like grass. Kind of sounds like our scripture from Isaiah. Like a flower of the field, so he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more. And its place no longer knows about it. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting to those who fear him and his justice to his children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do as, so as to do them. You know why David was a man after God's own heart? In Acts, it tells us, because the Lord said, he will do what I want him to do. You want to be a person after God's own heart? You got to do what God wants you to do. Now, I'm not telling you that's easy, but I'm telling you it is simple. You can almost remember that, can't you? That God has a plan. He's got a plan and a purpose. He's got a plan and a purpose and a will for you. Out of his sovereignty, from before the beginning of time, and you can follow it. Because he gives you the enablement. He gives you the comfort. He gives you the strength. He gives you all you need to do his perfect will. Well, I better get back here. Where was I? Isaiah says, As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. He's speaking the words of God. And you'll be comforted. In Jerusalem. You know, even my tires are called comfort assurance tires. I don't want to, they're, they're not biblical, Roger. And, and uh, not even spiritual, those tires. But they are comfort tires. And when we're in trouble, Paul says, let's start with God. Bless it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all mercies, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. And then, number two, thank you for flipping the switch, Fred. God comforts us in all our troubles. Well, Psalm 46, and thank you, Diane and and choir and, and musicians. Wow, what a wonderful set of songs this morning that tell us about this God who is faithful. He's there. He's right with us. Psalm tells us, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. This word helps us with the promise of a God who loves us, who knows us, who cares for us and comforts us in any and all the difficulties of our lives. Jesus is able to sympathize with our pain, our guilt, our grief, our ugliness, and the stuff on the inside. But also when the world, our enemies, our neighbors, our friends, our work associates, our schoolmates, our family, and even our church family, when they bring us pain. Hebrews 4 tells us, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let's hold firmly to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all things, just as we are, yet without sin. Wow. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in the time of our need. Well, this verse in 1 Corinthians 1, the fourth verse especially, teaches us at least two big lessons. We ought to expect affliction. We ought to expect trouble. Now, we don't like it, but let's be real. Let's let's talk about reality here. Trouble is real. And uh, Jesus himself says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you'll have trouble. You will have trouble. You will have trouble. Did you hear his word? This is Jesus' promise to you that we're going to have trouble. 
But take heart. Jesus says, I've overcome the world. And even Peter, you know, he says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the suffering of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of His glory you may rejoice with exultation. If you're reviled for the name of Christ, you're blessed, because the Spirit of, and glory of God rests on you. Wow. And here's the second truth. We should all expect God to comfort us in our afflictions. Whether we suffer directly for Christ as we stand firm against the challenges of our Christian faith or whether we suffer in Christ as a result of living in a broken world, God promises to comfort us in all, all, all our trouble. And Paul had firsthand experience. God offers to all of us who call upon the name of Jesus salvation that includes comfort. Even today you can call on the name of the Lord and find peace with God through forgiveness of your sins and the comfort and assurance of the God of all comfort. Well, we're winding down. They had to change that clock in the back to make sure that I didn't let you out early. God comforts us so we can comfort others. Wow. Here's the secret to Christian living. Don't keep it to yourself. Enjoy Jesus, His company, His comfort, His peace, and share it. Share it. Give it away so you can receive even more comfort. My friend Nate Gustafson, he spoke to us here right in this sanctuary about a year ago about dealing with dementia. And he told about visiting in a nursing facility recently, and here he heard a patient crying out, Can anyone have a cup of coffee with me? And so the patient repeated that over and over. This patient, facing the end of life's journey, was just asking for someone to be with her. Just one little hope-filled moment. And Nate went, got a cup of coffee, two cups of coffee, and shared with that patient to give her a little comfort. I think about, <clears throat> yeah, you've heard of Bruce Springsteen? Now, Jill, don't get excited. We're not going to sing any Bruce Springsteen this morning. But he's got a song that really gets me. I just need a human touch. A human touch. Sometimes that's all people need. Just your touch, your word, your encouragement, you coming and sitting alongside them, sharing with others who are in trouble, in grief, in distress, in need, in poverty, in pain of heart, sharing with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, we're in the line of Abraham. Think about it. Genesis 12, the Abrahamic covenant, what God tell him? You're going to be blessed. But he also said, you're going to be blessed to be a blessing to all the nations. And that's exactly what we are to be. We're comforted to comfort others. Now I want to tell you about my grandma Wynn. She was one great, wonderful Grandma, just saying her name, I, I can feel her arms around me. I can smell her cooking. I can hear her praying for me. When I go to visit, when I was a kid on the farm, she'd have everything that a little kid would want, cookies and candy and soda pop and just everything. And she'd fix my little bed, always had a big blanket on it. Comforter, woohoo! It was warm. It was cuddly. Kind of like this comforter. Now, don't think that we're not going anyplace with this. 
Remember what Jesus said? I'm going to give you another comforter. Yeah. Those red letter words, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper, another comforter, another advocate, so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and will be in you, the blessed Holy Spirit. And Paul, over in the Romans, he said, now in the same way the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself, the Spirit himself, the Spirit of Jesus the very Spirit of God intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. These blankets. My granddog Kenna has a thunder blanket <laughs> so that she won't get anxious or fidgety in the midst of a storm. Well, I want you to just think about this, this comforter, this comforter, the comfort of God. When I'm in one of life's many storms, God gives his comfort in all my trouble, all my grief, all my afflictions, all my pain, my disappointments, my pressures to conform, my pressures of living that sometimes are heavy to comfort me so that I can comfort others. You're here today, and I look out on this group. Many of you know, I know you, because you've been to Grief Share. And I know that some of you have lost your husband, your wife, your mother, your dad, your son, your daughter, your brother, your friend. You lost your job, you've lost your health, you've lost your way, maybe. You've lost your hope. Maybe you've lost your future. The God of all comfort is the one who is your source of comfort. And maybe you're in pain today, and he wants to give you himself his comfort. It's an amazing adventure when you take and receive the comfort of God. I don't see John in here today. Where's John? Okay, John, I need you down here. Can somebody help you? Do you need help down? I need you. Because I want to I want to share my comforter with John today. And uh, John, as he comes, Sandy, I want you to come. Yeah, because I want John to share this comforter with you. And Connie, you're here. Why don't you come on down? And where's Dolores? Yeah, there she is. And Mark, come on. No, we're going to be down here. They've got me unleashed. You're scaring me. Yeah, you don't need to be scared. You don't need to be scared. I'm going to, you know, doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Yeah. It's sweaty. I know. Well, I can't help that. Would you, would you share that with, with Sandy? No, put it on there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you. He's like a good brother, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Does it feel Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's nice warm. and soft. And it is. Dolores. Yeah, don't mess with her hair. Like that? Yeah. Would you share your comfort with Connie? Kathy? Come here. Gloria? Come on. Connie? 
Would you share your comfort with Mark? Mark? Yeah, watch the hair. Well, you, get on, you don't have to worry about that from you. Yeah. Mark, can you share your comfort with Gloria? Kathy, you're going to come up here? Because Gloria is going to share her comfort with you. Yeah. Does that feel good? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Goldie, are you here? Yeah, come here. And Diane, you come too. Yeah. How's that feel, Kathy? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> Would you f share your comfort with Goldie? Yeah. <laughs> Is it heavy enough for you? It's fine. You like it? Yeah. It's comfy. It's comfy. Cozy. Yeah. Where's Diane? Yeah, that Diane. Would you share your comfort yeah. with Diane? Yeah. Who else we got here? I guess we'll stop there. I, and thank you for sharing your comfort with me. Thank you all. Thank you.